Because there was a, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Here, here are the sets. Yeah, so that's Boris's car. I wonder if he's looking at that like, don't hurt my baby. And uh, Boris said is out there racing. Uh, well, I, or, I'm sorry, uh, Ken Twaits, I think, is out there in Poncho Weaver and Boris Said's car just trying it out. So here we go again. We are back out on track, as you can see. We are back to racing conditions in a moment. And uh, we had an incident on the warm-up lap, sadly losing a car into the tyre wall that probably just jumped onto the uh, power too early. But now we're going to jump onto the power at just the right time for the start of this race. And immediately the number nine of Buford takes the lead ahead of Ray Everingham on the inside of the 24. That, Buford leads in the nine. That could be future NASCAR Hall of Famer yeah. passing, overtaking a current NASCAR Hall of Famer. Yeah, nice story. So everybody cleanly through now. Now this is where the incident occurred in a moment. Uh, when they come to the bottom of this hill, this is turn five. I hope Bill Elliott is watching hill. this. Yeah, I hope Bill Elliott you know, is watching he's this. He's got to be proud of that. We're so proud, Bill. Yeah. Jim, if you guys are watching, Carlos, um, so proud of Chase well, Elliott Chase winning the championship. Chase did a Trans Am race, didn't he? Uh, Bill did a Trans Am race yes, in did. Mid-Ohio a couple years ago. I'm not sure Chase has. I'm not sure his team would allow that as Ray Everham takes Jay Buford going into six. No, no, no. When he was in Xfinity years ago. I'm not sure. Oh, I don't know. I'll find that out, though. Okay. And that's Benoit Bergeron in that red Ferrari. So how often do you see a GT1 car, a stock car, and a Ferrari 458 racing no, each not very other? often. But that's the beauty of vintage racing. As they pull down this long straightaway, but he's going to be able to break much, much later, as you're seeing right now, and really closing the gap. And then that's Bruce Raymond in that brand-new TA2 car from Silverhair, last year's Group 10 champion. And that's a pretty car. I think that was Rafa's car last year. Yeah, I think uh, that would have been, yeah. Makes sense. So, Everingham has got the better down the back straight of the number nine of Buford, but they're all slotting through. And it is Ray Everingham from Buford, then Benoit Bergeron in third place, Bruce Raymond in fourth, Dave Ricci in fifth place, Scott Lovett sixth, and Lance Ozek, Ozek in Seven. That's a great looking car there. Ernie Francis Sr. and the Breathless team prepares that car. And it does look like a bandit car. Sounds great, doesn't it? And what's the McDonald's car? Let me have a look. It's another NASCAR, but... Uh, to me, that looks like a Bill Elliott car. Yeah, it does. So we're finally underway after a bit of a delay, but we're going strong in our group racing here for SVRA. Our grand finale here for the SVRA 2020 season. Ben Sissel and Jonathan Green bringing you the action across the live stream. And the car's already spreading out now. Yep. And so um, right now in our timing and scoring, it's saying Scott Borchetta in second place. It's Scott's car, yeah. but it's actually Jade Buford, Scott's NASCAR Xfinity road course driver for his team is out there just getting some stock car experience. That's a smart move actually. Use the historics to uh, actually drive, because they yeah. haven't changed that it's much. Nothing more valuable than seat time. And look at this uh, GT3 cup car coming up on the inside there. It's a good move if he can hold it. That's David Richardson in that 2007 Porsche GT3 Cup car. He's racing with us in International GT this weekend, but also there in the Liquid Molly. It looks like your, what is that? Motul sponsored Porsche, the 06. And that's Lance Osick. What I love about all Camaro. of these cars at these group is the sound. So, so much good noise coming out of these cars. I miss it in some of the modern day cars today, but not in Trans Am, which is why we're here. Here goes the number one. That's Michael uh, Charamonti in the Porsche GT3 that we saw for the number one. 
Yeah, he actually had a pretty bad off yesterday in the International GT race. And I spoke to him because he safely pulled off the track, which we asked him to do, and got a chance to speak to him. He was not real happy about that. Yeah, there he is. That distinctive Porsche sound of the 911, it really is. If, if, I, had to, if I had to identify one racing sound, it would be an accelerating 911. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> Too easy. This is a neat track, too, because, um, you know, in this different class racing, there's parts of this track that high horsepower really give you an advantage. But the equally other parts that right in this part that we're watching here, uh, this is where handling the Porsches have the advantage yeah. over those stock cars and Trans Am cars. Oh, no doubt about it. I was talking about it yesterday. That's what has made the 911 so successful. Um, has been the ability to have horsepower down the straights and the nimble handling, which it does have and has had, I mean, since the 70s yep. or even earlier. And if you're seeing uh, all these cars with Mission on them and you're hungry for Mexican food because they make the best chips and uh, tortilla chips, Juan Gonzalez is a big sponsor of this series, the International GT that these cars race in, and he's here racing with us this weekend. And the cool thing about Juan Gonzalez, great racer, but he is actually the largest cornmeal manufacturer in the world and has over 170 factories in all different countries all over the place. What I love about Ben is if it comes to food, your knowledge, your oh, knowledge yeah. of historical cars is brilliant, but your knowledge of food is hysterical, never mind yes. historical. And uh, I do actually every night that I've been here. So last night was my fourth night in a row of eating at the same Mexican restaurant. I love wow. Mexican food. And Juan Gonzalez, I think about him every Tuesday because every Tuesday we have Taco Tuesday at my house with my kids and we pull out the Mission Chips and the Mission Tortilla Chips. There you go. Now, we're running out of time in this one because we've got, what, three minutes on the clock just over. So they should get another lap in and then I think we'll be down to last lap time or even checkered flag line. Uh, I, in fact, I'm watching the uh, checkered flag man actually unfurling the checkered flag. So I don't think it's going to be long before this one's over. And Ray Everton with a 3.8 second lead now over Buford. As we take a look at the number 90. And the checkered flag is out, so. That was Brent Burmath in the 90. Here he is, coming down towards the checkered flag himself as we finish this one and try to stay on time. There it is. And uh, always, always good to uh, see these guys in action. And just the mere sound of it, even in this uh, bulletproof glass tower I'm in, it still sounds pretty darn good. Yep. I can't wait for us to talk to Ray Everham because I've been following him. He's been yeah, racing yeah. with us here. Um, as a race car driver, you yeah, know, we've all followed his NASCAR career, but as a race car driver, a road racer, he just made it up in his mind he really wants to become a fast road racer, and he's put a ton of time and effort into it, and he is really getting fast. So that concludes our group racing from the Group 10. One of our more exciting, perhaps, as Ken Thwaites, it looks like, brings that uh, Boris said car home. I'd like to see the smile on his face. Yeah. 850 horsepower, no driver aid. Going from that Audi to that, that's got to be a difference. But Ken, you know, being a big American muscle car fan himself, I'm sure he can handle it. There's the Python. Yeah, and we the call Australian it as he's uh, giving the oi oi to the uh, corner worker there. But uh, that's the Australian Cobra, the Python. And we want to thank all of our corner workers putting in this time. And if you want the best seat in the house at any yeah. road racing, volunteer at your local club and become a corner worker. Here we go then. This is the official result of Group 10, Ray Everham. The absolute legend wins in Chevrolet Corvette. Benoit Bougrand takes second place. And it's Jay Vuford in Scott Bachetta's car who takes a podium third. Bruce Raymond in fourth, Scott Lovett in Fifth place, Richard Richardson, Dave Ritchie, uh, Michael Charamonte in eighth position, Lance Ozek in ninth, and Randall Kasling in tenth position. So that concludes our Group 10 race one.
We're going to take a short break here from Road Atlanta, and we're really looking forward to some more action from Trans Am coming very, very soon. Stay with us. We'll take a short break, and we'll be right back.